Let's get excited. Let's clap our hands. I know Bridget's already ready. Let's do this. Amen.
church and just really focus on man there's so many things to look at um, in the world today amen so many things to be thankful for so many things to pray for and uh, I know we go through trials and tribulations and one thing that is most beautiful is that God works in us every single day he refines us he puts us through the fire he tests us And sometimes it may not go the way we want, but God's will, his purpose is divine. He's sovereign and he knows what he's doing. Unlike us, we don't know what we're doing sometimes, but he does. And when we lay our trust in him, we allow him to refine us. That's when the glory, the blessings pour out, amen.
with us. Keep worshiping. How many believe we serve an awesome God? Think about that. How many believe we serve an awesome God? Amen. We woke up today, church. We woke up today. We're breathing. He's amazing. If we really, really think about it, gosh, he's in everything. Thank you, Jesus.
give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You all may be seated. Yes, let's, let's go into prayer and let's continue this. Uh, I always say, like, worship isn't over. We're worshiping him. We're reading his word. We're getting into this. We're in his presence, you know. We've, we've been led in, in, in worship, and now let's, let's go to his word and let's continue to seek him out because all those things are still there. All those, uh, we need him in every possible way, so let's do that. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for letting us have to, uh, the ability to do this, the freedom to do this, to, to know you're there, to to see your word and read it and, and hear the, the truth and then, and then sing about you. And just, God, thank you so much. Thank you for the gift of just being able to sing to you, God, and the freedom we have. And I, and I pray we'll always do that, God, and we'll never take it for granted and be with us all here now. Continue, God, just to be here with us and, and, and draw us closer to you in every possible way. I pray that, that wherever we are, everybody out here, God, that, that we're seeking you, that, that we're, we're coming here just to lay everything down at your feet and, and follow you, and, and we want to know you, God. If somebody here doesn't even know you, God, I pray that they just they w- would just be met by you and know that you're there, that you're, you're real, that you love us, that you have all the answers, you have the truth, and, and we would just be open to you, God. So I just pray that you would break into all of our hearts right now. And God, give me the words to say. God, get me out of the way. I pray that I interpret your word right, and then we all here get it right, and, and put it into our to practice in our life, God, and follow you and tell the world about you, God, and change the things in our life that need to be changed and, and, and mold everything to you, God, and just allow you to do the work in our life. So, God, just change us forevermore right now, God. Continue to work in us. Jesus, thank you so much for going to the cross for us. Can't wait to see you one day face to face. Thank you so much for that hope that we have, too. We're going to be with you. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, the other day, me and Beth, we got a little bit confused on, uh, we, we split up some of our, like, jobs around the house. You know, we do that, and Alyssa has her jobs, and, and we'll do ours, and we kind of split it up, and, and, and Alyssa was doing, like, some of the big ones is, like, Alyssa will do the laundry and everything there, and then me and Beth will, like, take turns on some of the dishes and different things in there. So, what I heard, what she said, was that she was going to be doing them, you know, she was, she was there, and, and, and she's already shaking her head back there. So, what... <laughs> What I hear that's wrong, I think it's starting to become legendary, you know. I, I don't know if it's a selective hearing. Guys with me there, we need to form a bond. We need to stick together on this because I hear it wrong sometimes. And so I remember this is what was happening. It is, uh, so when I'm talking about dishes, like, it, was, it was pretty bad. I'm not just talking about, some of y'all are probably way better than this. You probably have like a dish or two in there that like drives you crazy or whatever. I'm not just talking about a couple of dishes in there. I'm talking about like, this is bad on us. Beth probably don't want to tell, but it's like, it's full, you know, and it's like, I'm talking like Tetris full, you know, you're putting them in there and, and getting them in where you can. It's full, and it's crowding out to, like, the sides, you know. It, it, one of those to where, I don't know if you guys are like this, like, when companies coming over, and it's like, we can't do the dishes real quick. So it's like, you move the mess closer to the sink. So if, it's like if it's closer to the sink, you somehow seem more clean. I don't know if that's <laughs> kind of how I seem. Have you ever been there? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe Maybe we just need help with that. But that's where we were. We were at that point. And um, there's been other times we were there. But the, it, it, we were there. And uh, it was dishes like that. And I really heard her say, like, you know, she was going to be doing them. Or, like, I think it was something I misheard. Like, she was going to be doing <laughs> twice. Like, it was her time. Anyway, I just heard she was doing it. And so we were there talking about this. And I was in there, like, watching TV or something. And then it finally went on later. And she's like, that's, that's it. I'm just going to do them. You know, and I'm, I'm over there thinking, because it's your turn. <laughs> You know, it's like, to which I learned that, no, I just misunderstood it, and it was actually mine. That's what she had been trying to tell me, you know, and so, I see, that's the thing. I thought it was your turn anyway, so she did them. I think she did them twice, too, um, after that. But misunderstandings, you have that. That's, that's guys and girls. We do that a lot. We have lots of misunderstandings. But we had that. It was, it was a misunderstanding there. Uh, it just kind of a lack of understanding. It, it, what, what you see things and, and, and how you, you view it wrong, it's going to affect really everything about, about that situation or, or, or life in, in, in a lot of ways. We're, we're in the book of Mark. We're, we're in chapter 9 right now. We've been going through that for a long time now. We're just going straight through. 
and the disciples. You see that as we go and read, which is sometimes it's kind of comforting. They're like us. They, they have a lack of understanding. They, they misinterpret things you know, in so many ways. We can go back. We have the luxury of being able to read all the book and see, like, why didn't they see that? But I, I guarantee you, many of us would be in that same way. We'd be hearing things wrong. We, we'd be thinking he's saying something when he was saying something different, just like them. And, and that's how it was for these guys right there, which is why it's, it's still relevant for us today. We don't just go and read the Bible and come and talk about this, sing some songs, and then look at some old stuff that doesn't have any meaning for us today. This has absolute meaning for us, like our life. That's what I think many people, maybe if anything, like a side note I'll say here, is many people that are coming into the church, maybe you're Christian, maybe you're new Christian, maybe you haven't seen like growth in him. If you have this this picture of the Bible that it doesn't have anything to really say to us today, you know, it doesn't really show us how to live, then I see why maybe nothing's happening, or maybe why it, it, your faith is kind of stagnant, or, or nothing's really changed, or you're not hearing from God in that way. I'm telling you, like, this is, this is absolutely so important for us to get into Scripture and apply this. And so we see these guys, even though it was a long time ago, still a lot of the same issues, and, and he tells us the truth. And so we're going to be in Mark chapter 9, I'm going to start in verse 33. I'm going to see some of the, like we said, some of the conversations he had, what he was talking about in there, and how that applies to us. So verse 33, I'm going to read in this section here, 33 through 37. They came to Capernaum. When he was with them in the house, he asked them, what are you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me doesn't welcome me, but the one who sent me. And I'll put this, this on the screen here. God's ways are typically countercultural. I've said that to you guys probably in many ways like that, but God's ways are typically countercultural. And that shouldn't shock us when we think about it, or at least if you know we're broken, we're sinful, we're, we're messed up people, we need his help. So that should, really shouldn't shock us that his ways are countercultural. In fact, we should want that. We shouldn't want this, this God. He, he's different from us, but we, we shouldn't be thinking that God is going to be just like us. We're, we're, we're broken and messed up and we need help. Otherwise, why would we be going to him if he needed help as well? He's, he's countercultural. His ways are higher than ours. He has complete full knowledge, all love, all these things we talk about. He is perfect in every possible way. So it makes sense that his ways would be countercultural to us. When we're living in sin, when we're, when we're messed up, we should want those things. So he, he comes to them. You can read even in Matthew. I, I told you guys before, if you read some of the Gospels, you can compare them, some of the stories. If your Bible has like a note, that's what I like about some of the Bible says. It has a note saying this section was also in Matthew or Luke or John, and you can read that. And some of them you can see a little bit more detail in there. But, but they're there. They're walking along. They're going to probably the next ministry, different things that they were doing, and they would have these conversations and, and Jesus is there, and, and he knows these things, what's going on. But they're having this conversation about who's the greatest. You know, they're walking with the Messiah. They're walking with Jesus, Son of God, seeing these miracles, all these things. Many times he's teaching about what they're arguing about, you know. And, and they've been there, and they're having this argument about who's the greatest. That, that's what it was about. And so he asked them. And I think it had to go a little bit probably like they were not wanting to say anything because they realized Instinctively, you just know when you're having this argument about who's greatest and when someone calls you out, you know this probably isn't the most holy thing to be arguing about who's the greatest in this way when we're following the Messiah, you know. So, so, so they didn't really want to bring that up in there. They, they knew this. I, I think it just comes inside of it. It's this pride, it's arrogance, it's selfishness. All that stuff comes natural. We, we know that. I don't have to talk about that. We don't have to teach that. It just comes natural to us. We just want to be the best. In fact, I don't even have this in here. I just thought about it. But some of you guys that were at the uh, kickball tournament we did yesterday, we were there. We we're doing that to help somebody to raise money. You know, we wanted to do a good thing. But um, I, I don't know if some of y'all were like me, like, yeah, but it'd be nice to go home with the trophy. <laughs> you know, we're like, we want to do this. So we're out there. And, um, yeah, we're like, we're with the church. But uh, God still wants us to win. So we're out there. And, and, then, and then when it started getting a little bit more, we, well, here's the thing. Uh, this isn't the sermon. We, uh, we got beat pretty bad by the first team. It was, it was the firemen. And uh, I think they took it a little bit too serious, you know. At least that's, that's from the loser side, probably, I'm saying that. I think they took it too serious. 
And, and we got a little bit mad about that. We called in some reinforcements. Thanks for that. Um, and they helped us out. We got, us, we got a little better. We, we ended up with third or fourth. I don't know. If it, it's not about us. But, but we got a little... Uh, we got a little pride in there. It was like, it was like, it, it became about the winning and stuff. And I know I was, we were mad and, and, and it, it didn't go our way. I know how I was thinking. It's like, well, they're wrong. They're, they're cheating over there. And then when things went our way, it's like, well, it's just, no, that's, that's how it went. I mean, that's, that's, that's really right. But, but that stuff we don't really have to teach. By the way, we let them win. We didn't want to, we didn't want to go. And we, we finally, we finally realized our holiness better. But no, um, you don't have to teach that stuff. That just, it just comes natural to us. We, we want to we wanna win. We want to be better. We, we want to have this pride. We want to see who is better. And then we get competitive in that way with each other. And that's what they're doing with each other about their holiness. Who, who's greater? There, there was times when, when uh, Peter and John, or, or when uh, Andrew and John were, were uh, arguing about who's going to be on the right and left of Jesus. I mean, and, and the mom even got in on this. They were talking about this. And so that was, that was something that, they were dealing with the disciples, the ones that were used by God to write some of the New Testament books that we have. They're arguing about some of these things. God's ways are typically countercultural jars, and that's what Jesus was talking to him about. And he calls those things out. We, we see that, and he's pointing out. It's like, well, what were you guys talking about, even though he knew all this? And this is what he said in there. He, he said, as you read those verses, whoever wants to be first must be last and the servant of all. That's what he was saying in those verses. That's what he's talking about. That's the countercultural thing. Whoever wants to be first, that's what we're arguing for. That's what we want to do. You've got to be last. And I don't know how we could have done that in the kickball tournament. But that's, that's our mind. We think about, well, what do you mean about this? How can, I be, how can I be last? I want to be first. I want to do this. And he's like, you want to be first, you've got to be last. And he's, his teachings and when he's coming in there, it's different from, it challenges just those things that are just ingrained in us of wanting to be better than everybody. Wanted to be first in all this. He challenges all those things. It's always countercultural. I don't have this verse up here, but like I said, you can go back to Matthew and you can read in this. But in Matthew 18, he kind of puts a little bit more in there when he's talking about what they were going through and, and using kids there. He says, unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, He's not saying we all need to, like, pray, God, make me a kid again, you know, because if you're, like, an adult, you pass that stage. We're all like, I don't want to be a kid again. Like, you don't have to pray to literally become a little kid again in that way. That's not what he's, what he's talking about there. But we see this, like, with these kids, these childlike, sincere hearts of uh, willingness to, to follow him. I, you know, we're not talking about, like, the, all this selfishness and wanting to rebel against parents. He's not talking about that. He's talking about this childlike, sincere heart of actually trusting. Like, that type of an attitude of coming to God, coming to Jesus. We're willing to hear him and, and, and submit to him and follow him and just, just have that all-out, complete reliance on him like he's the king of everything. Like, sometimes maybe you had with your parents or your kids have with you, like, you're the king, you can do it all, and we secretly know we can't do it all, you know? This is the idea like we have with him because he can. You know, he is the one. He is the one who's greater than all. I, I think he's asking for that. I think he's calling for us to have that true, complete dependence on him. Do we have that type of sincere heart and trust and childlike faith to him? Because that's what he's asking about. That's what he's talking about, this, this, this countercultural type of thing. Um, Ricky Bobby says, if you ain't first, you're last, right? I don't know why I put that in there, but that's, we know that. That comes natural, thanks to the shaking. Just don't walk out on me. Yeah, like, we'll talk after. God, you shouldn't have. But Ricky Bobby, that's the world stance, it, isn't it? It's, you ain't first, you're last. I mean, we know that. We laugh at it, but that's just more kind of natural to us. That, that's, that's the attitude of what we have. Like, if you ain't first, you're last. It's all about co competition and doing it. But Jesus is complete opposite. He says, if you want to be first, you are last. That's what he's saying. You become a servant. It's completely flipped. That's what you got to teach. The other way is it just comes natural to us. And so he brings this, this kid in there. And he's just like, you gotta be, you gotta be like this child. He's probably, you know, at Peter and Andrew's home. Maybe one of the kids were there, and they're there, and he's bringing them up. That's what it's, what's cool about Jesus. What he did, he went the extra mile. He didn't just give some words. He didn't just say, you need to do this, you need to do this, and like leave. He would say, this is what you need to do, and then he would like point out a kid, like you need to be like this child. You need to welcome this child. You need to welcome everyone like this child. You need to be like that. He's like just using them as an example. They're the adults. They were out there arguing, who's the greatest? Who's the best? And then he's like bringing in a kid, and he's like, no, you guys look, you got to be like this kid right here. And they're all like, a kid? Because we've talked about this in that, in that culture, like kids, even, even women. I mean, that's how it was. It's like second-class citizens. That's what he's saying there. He's challenging them. 
probably making them mad, just hitting their egos and, and everything in that way. And he's saying, this is how you need to be there. And he's always challenging them in that way. Welcome them. I don't want you to forget them. But, but let's think about this, because it's not just relegated to kids. He's not just giving us a story about how to handle kids and what they need to be doing back there you know, when, they're, when they're teaching them. This is, this is the idea, I think, of how we need to be as, as Christians, okay? Because I always say, we come in here and we're talking about, what does it mean to be a Christian? Because this does no good if we just come in here and talk about some concepts and we're not, we don't really put this into practice in our life, right? He's calling us to, to live for him, to change our whole lives, to mold it around him, okay? You have the option of doing it or not, but let's talk about this, and this is what we should be doing. He says, I want you to have this type of a lifestyle. I want you to live this way, to, to welcome people like, you know, like a kid, to be like them in this way. And, and the idea also, it, like I said, is not just relegated to kids. It's, it's how, do we, how do we welcome anyone, anyone who, who is needy in some way. Or, or you could just go to somebody who can't offer you anything. Let, let's go to that. How are we with somebody who can't offer us anything? Because it's easy to help out and be there for somebody who's going to return that favor, going to do something with you, right? But somebody who's not going to be able to give you anything, and you know it, how are we with them in that way? Because that's the approach he's asking. That's, that's what he's saying. That's the things that he always, he always brought out there. Well, let's put even names here. Let's think about all this, like just the unwanted in society. Let's think about homeless Drug addicts, prostitutes. This isn't everybody. I'm just kind of putting a list of the thinking about this, uh, how we react to them. The needy in whatever way, the lonely, the questioning, people of other faiths, people of no faiths. I, I'm not saying lifestyles and beliefs are fine and we just look the other way. That's, <clears throat> that's not what I'm talking about there. But how do, we, how do we respond to them? How are we loving them and befriending them and being there for them? Jesus always challenges our thinking. <clears throat> don't put that on the screen. Jesus always challenges our thinking. Just like I said, it's that countercultural thing. He wants to challenge. He wants, it's that way of growing. And, and, and we always mention about like working out. You got to do these things. You got to work things out to, to really grow. And I think this is part of what he does. He's always going to challenge those things. Well, why is this? Why are you doing this way? You know, and, and he brought up this argument that they were having. Why are you guys doing that? And he's challenging them. And then he speaks the truth into them. Challenging those things. He would always say things like, you've heard it said, but I say. It was always different. I found this quote when he's talking about, when he says in there, welcoming people right there. And I found this quote. It just says, one definition of this, this welcome there is to be willing to accept someone's company. While the disciples argue over who's the greatest, Jesus tells them to take interest in the most vulnerable who can do nothing for them. When he says that whoever receives a child receives me, he's saying that he, God, arranges such circumstances as opportunities for us to act in faith and obedience. It's good to receive and care for children. It's best to do so in Jesus' name. To act in Jesus' name means to act as his representative by doing something he would do in the way he would do it. So again, he's telling us some things to do, but I, I like what he kind of adds in there. It's like doing in Jesus' name, doing it in that way. So it's not, just, it's not just in general. He's saying, this is what I want you to do as, as my followers, okay? You can get like a, a, a generalized concept of maybe some of the things te that Jesus teaches in the world without him, without, without Christianity. You can get some of those moral concepts. You, you really can. It's not, it's not foreign to so many people in the world. But the difference is, is doing it and believing in Jesus and, and for him and following him. And he's the center of everything. It, it's, it's different. It's different in so many ways in that way. That's what he's talking about there. He, he, would, always, he would always say why he was doing things there. It, this, is, this is about him. It's about putting him in the, in the middle of all this. Let me go on to the, to the next section and read this in, in Matthew 9, 38 through 41, because I, I just think it's so important as we read through this. Like, like I said, it, there's, a, there's a general morality that's out there in the world. I, I, I like to talk to skeptics and atheists, you guys know, and I do that online a lot and talking to people. And, and the idea is not that a non-Christian, whatever way it is, atheist or other religion, it's not that people don't have morals. It's not that people can't do some moral things and be good out there, but it's different in, in Christ. So, so he's not just teaching us some general morality. He's teaching us to follow Christ. That, that's, the, that's the idea. That's what I want you guys to understand. If, you, if you're trying to see what's the difference in coming into the church and learning some good things, I can do this somewhere out there in the world. There's, there's people teaching morality. The difference is well, we're not just teaching some general morality. We're teaching to be like Christ. It, it's a completely different thing. He's our model. He's our example. That's what we're shooting for, and that's what we should be doing. So it's not just a general morality. It's following him. 
for the perfect good. So he goes in, like I said, in, in the next few verses, I, I want to put it in here because it's a little bit of the unification that maybe we need as Christians. He's talking to him. He, he's challenged us some things, and he's going to challenge more right here. So verses 38 through 41. It says, Teacher, John said, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and, and we told him to stop because he wasn't one of us. Don't, don't tell him to stop, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah, that's Jesus, the anointed one, um, will certainly not lose their reward. So follow the flow of this conversation. You know, he's, he's coming to them. He's like, if you guys want to be great, you got to become last. Because he's challenging those things. If you guys want to be great, you got to become last. I want you guys to become a servant. I want you to be humble. I want you to be willing to go to anybody, the least in society. Go to them, talk to them, help them out. The ones who can't even offer you anything. I want you guys to be willing to go to them. This is what I want you guys to do. So they're hearing this. They're hearing this from Jesus. And I think it's challenging them. I think they're probably still like, this is tough, man, what, what Jesus is talking about. This is, this is a lot more difficult than what I thought. And so then John's like, well, what about this guy, Jesus? We, we saw him out there. He was healing people. I, you know, I, I don't know if they were challenging that. Like, he's healing. He was casting out demons and stuff like this. But he's not with us, Jesus. He wasn't with us. He's not in our group. And I think they were probably hoping for, maybe they were a little skeptical, but I think they're probably hoping for, for Jesus to come to them and be, and, and, and encourage them. Yeah, like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like, like build them up. Exactly, guys. He's not with us. He's not one of us. He's different. They're different. You guys, we're the one. We're the team. You know, we're, we're better than everybody else. I think that's what maybe John and the other guys were looking for. They were looking for a little bit of encouragement in that way, but Jesus didn't do that. Stop. Don't tell him to stop. He's not doing anything wrong there. It's not about not being in this group right here. Jesus never taught him that. He was never teaching them just to have this closed off little group of just them and, and if anybody else learned what they were talking about and spread it out there, he didn't tell them to stop. That, that's not what he was ever teaching in there. We can see this. It can happen in churches. We can see it all the time. I'm not going to get into, like, we can go on a path here about, like, denominations, whatever you believe on that. I think there's good and bad. Let's just be honest. There, there can be good and bad with those. We're not going to talk about that right there. But the problem comes in when we had this same attitude as the disciples there, like, like we're the only ones. Whatever it is, if it's just one church, if it is just one denomination, if it's one family or whatever, we can have those type of things. Or we, can, we can be like, we're the only ones, you know? We're the only ones who are right. And then you, you have this, this, this separation from everybody. This isn't up on the screen, but this is in Matthew 12, 30. Jesus stated what he said in there, like in the negative here. In, in, in Matthew 12, 30, he said, whoever's not with me is against me, right? And right there he was saying, whoever's not against us is, is for us. And, and whoever's not against me is, is for me. I probably said that backwards there, but he, he, he's saying that in the negative in this sense. It, it's either we're, we're with him or not. This is the two things I think he was really talking about there. He's trying to get them to see is, is unity and pointing out you can't be neutral with Jesus. That, that, that's something, I mean, we, we got to get that down so strongly in the church. We cannot be neutral with Jesus. It's either we're with him or, or we're not, okay? It's not straddling the fence. It's not, well, I'm, most of the time over here, I want to do this, this stuff up here. Just don't mess with this. Yeah, I like Jesus because I don't want to go to hell, but, but I still like all this stuff. That, that, this, he says, that he's telling us, that you see that throughout Scripture, like you cannot be neutral with Jesus. It's, it's all in or just go the other way. That, that's what he's talking about. And that's what I think he's talking about with these guys. There. I think he's hitting on this. He's talking about the love we should have for each other, the, the, this, this unity in there. And, and then them, he was, he was just pointing out, like, don't talk about this guy just because he's not in this group with us. We could be neutral with Jesus because of lukewarmness, cowardliness. Let's just be honest on it. Fear of what others might think or just because you just want to live in sin. I mean, it, it, that's, that's what it is. I mean, if we, if we don't want to be all in with him, if we want to be neutral on it, I think it hits on those things right there. Just fear. I just don't want to give up this sin. I want to keep doing this. 
I, I'm afraid of what other people say. And all of it is you're putting whatever that stuff is ahead of God. That's why I talked about that a little while back. I said it's either you have God on the throne or, or it's us. I mean, that, that's just what it is. It comes down to that all the time because we're always fearing something else. It's either God or something else, and, and it can't be. We cannot be neutral in that. I think that's what he's talking about with these guys. He's trying to get them to see that. He even talked to some of his guys earlier on a few weeks back, you know, a few chapters back, and he said, who do people say I am? You know, and they said their thing, and then he said, but who do you guys say I am? He's always putting us on that. He's telling, like, we have to make that commitment. We, we have to make that decision there. Who do we say Jesus is? And we can't be neutral on that. Who do we say that he is? I, I found another quote on this, about these verses. Let me just read it, because I like what it says. It says, this, verse, this uh, verse feels like a non sequitur, if that doesn't make sense. That's a logic statement, a statement with broken logic. However, it's part of the longer conversation about where individuals fit into Jesus' kingdom. The disciples assume they are first and will have the most authority. As a result, they argue to see where they rank with respect to each other. Jesus explains that leaders are first and foremost servants. They should be more concerned about welcoming the powerless like children than displaying their own power. So they ask about someone who publicly appears to be in their group but isn't. Jesus said they're still being too exclusionary. If this man has faith enough to exercise demons in Jesus' name, he's not a threat to the kingdom, even if he may be a threat to their egos. And I think that's what he's talking about. There's like a, there's like a threat to their ego. That, that's really probably what it came down to, because we don't get anything in here about this being some wrong teaching or something. This was their egos. This was them like, he's not with us. They, they've messed up sometimes. Remember, I think it was the last chapter we looked at when, when they couldn't heal this, this, this one kid. They, they were bringing him to Jesus, and they couldn't do it. And he's like, D Jesus, your guys... He couldn't heal him, you know? And, and so I think this was more part of their ego. Like, he's doing stuff out there, and it was maybe making them mad. Just like us in the kickball, it's like, they're winning. Well, they're wrong. They're steroids. I think some of us, we dropped that statement out there or whatever, you know, because we're, we're against it. It had to be steroids. That's the only way. And then we were, like, getting later in the day, like, where can we get something now? Um, <laughs> but I think these guys were, were kind of, kind of like this. So this isn't right. They're like, they can't be doing that. He, he's not with us, Jesus. You got you to gotta condemn this because now people are seeing that. You know, and there was, it was hitting their egos in a lot of ways there. John was, in his wording, he was saying he's not following us. There, there, there's no us in that, like, like to follow. That's what I want us to see. It's not, it's not us. It's, it's Jesus. It's only him. That, that's, that's what you and I, like, we have to do that as a church. All churches to do that. We need to understand, what, what are we doing all this for? And when we do spread the message, are we making it about us? Are we saying, you need to come and join us? Are we saying, you need to come with us? Because we're, we're following Christ. It's, it's about following him. That's all we do. We need to make sure it's always about pointing to Christ. Because I think they, they were challenged on that in a, in a lot of ways there. Paul brought up in 1 Corinthians 1 with, with some of them. Remember, he said, you guys are arguing about this. And the church in Corinth was a mess in a lot of ways. And he said, you guys are arguing about this. Some say you follow me. Some say you follow Apollos. Some Peter. Some Jesus. What is this? It, it, it's all about Jesus. It's not about, this is in Christianity. It would be all about, like, like I said, following a denomination, following a pastor, following a group of churches. I, I get we're, we're committed to groups, and, and, and we should be, you know, in church. I think that's good. But it's like if our commitment is, is to them rather than, who it should be about Jesus, and there's something wrong. Then there's going to there's be something wrong. It's going to be messed up. We're going to be going down the wrong path. We're going to be teaching the wrong things. People are going to get the wrong ideas about this. So what was this about in here today, what they were talking about there? In general, being a follower of Christ, just in general. More specifically, what we've seen is Jesus was commanding and trying to build this, this servant, humble, committed to Christ type of heart in all of them. And this unification with them, right? Like, stop pointing about these other people. Just because they're not in your group, stop pointing out there. That, that's a big one, I, I really think. That, that's a hard one, I think, for Christians. Maybe some of those other things we can look at, but it is hard. It's like, we have this, we should have a commitment, you know, to our churches. I get that. It, it's like, your, it's your family there. But it gets unhealthy many times, pointing out to other groups. By the way, this isn't to do with, like, when there's wrong doctrinal teachings. You guys, we have to call that. When there's something that's completely wrong, you have to be against that. This isn't like saying unification at, at the, uh, 
you know, at, at the, the, the loss of, of teaching truth, you know. It's not just saying someone calls himself a church or whatever, and, and they're completely wrong. I mean, they're, they're flat out sinning in what they're, what they're teaching right there. No, no, that, that's not what it's saying. We call those things out. We need to do that. We need to go to them and, and love and, and, and try to bring them on the right path. But, you know, that's not what it's talking about. I, I don't see anywhere in there where he's trying to say you don't call that out. There's other passages where he says that. You need to call out false teachers because they're leading people astray, and maybe some people like to hell because they're teaching the wrong things. So that needs to be in there. But I'm talking about true Christian biblical churches. Like there should be brotherly love together with each other, like, like family. It should be there. And we agree on the fundamentals, you know, Jesus, who he is. He went to the cross. He died for us. The only way for salvation is through him and faith alone in him, you know. And we're talking about true fundamentals. Like we agree on those, okay. And we need to have that, that unification with them, with each other. That, that's a hard thing. We need to be praying for that. But I think that's what he was talking with these guys about. I think that's what he was talking about there, trying to get them to agree upon. And we see that, that pride and, and disagreement there. L- listen to these lyrics. And, and by the way, when I say lyrics, um, I'm going to speak them. I'm not, I'm not going to, maybe I'll get you up here. I, you guys have probably heard this. I, I'm going to really end with, I'm going to read these words and then I'm going to read a passage and, and that'll be the end there. But I like this because uh, it, it's, this was around from the 60s, but I, I think I've even heard updated versions of this. I don't know if I've heard the, the old one of this, but talking about this unification, I just thought it was a really good uh, way to think about it. And I don't remember what it's called, but it says, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. I'm going to try to speak it in a lyrical way that you guys can understand it. Um, and we pray that our unity will one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yeah, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yeah, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And, and I bet some of you guys know that song. You've probably heard that, that out there. Yeah. Were you, I, I, were you singing it out there? I thought I heard some. So, yeah. It's probably, you should, if you guys, you should have just taken over and, and done it for me because... But yeah, but it, it's, it's so simple. But I think he was even talking about that. Like, in fact, I, I, think, uh, I think this guy may have been a, uh, may a, a Catholic priest. And I'll be completely honest with you. I have some major, major uh, problems with teachings in, in Catholicism. I'm just telling you, you can talk to me about some of those. But I'm just saying, like, what he was saying there and, and, and pointing to the truth and, and, and coming together in this way, that is, man, man that is something that, that we need to, in, in the true Christian church in the world, like, we, we need to, we need to have that with each other, coming together. Like, like it's just it, the spirit of disunity, especially now. Man, and we're seeing it now. It's just it's growing more and more. It, the church needs to come together. If we can't, how are we going to affect the world that's already broken anyway? They, they can just point to us and say, you guys are broken anyway. Well, why would we want to join this? It's no different from everybody out here. And, you know, if we say, no, 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 but our group is, is, is okay. It's like our group is supposed to be a part of the worldwide church right? And yet we're just, we're just talking about a small group of us who are the same. We need to work on that. And here's the last scripture I'm going to read. I'm going to end on this, and I want us to pray about all this stuff here. Here's a scripture that he goes back to, John 13, 34 through 35. Jesus said, a new command I give you, and he talks about love here, and it's not as if love was never talked about, but the love here is the way that he loved. He says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples, if you love one another. So again, it, it, it's not that they'd never been taught love before. The new part is, is to love the way Jesus did. He showed action. He gave his life. Th- that's the thing. How are we, are, are we that way with each other? I, I don't know that any of us will ever have to face that, but I'm saying that's what he's calling for. This, let's just be honest. He's calling for some deep things. Countercultural, he wants to challenge the root of everything that's inside of us. And we come here, we want to talk about this, we want to know what Christianity is like. Let, let, let's, let's really look at that. This is what he's saying. I, I'm calling you guys to have this type of love, the love that he had for us. He died for us when we didn't deserve it. He died for everyone when no one deserved it, when we will never deserve it. Stack up all our good deeds or whatever together, and it doesn't even get into the, the department of even deserving it or even near that, okay? No one ever, ever is going to deserve that, okay? He just loved us. He just did that, and he's showing us. He's the example, the new command I give you, love as I have loved you. By that, the world's going to know you're my disciples. So let's stop the, you know, 
separating from, from others. We've we got we to gotta unify in that way. That, that's a hard thing. I, I don't know. One little sermon there is not going to like solve it. It's like, yeah, and like fixes all the problems in the world. I know there's problems. I, I'm not naive in that way, but I'm saying that's what he's calling for us to do. He's calling for us to be that way, to love, to have this humble commitment and, and, and all that devotion to him like, he's, like you see children and to welcome everybody regardless, even when they can't offer you anything and just love the way he's calling us to. And that's what I hope we'll do. I hope we pray for that. You guys, go ahead and bow your heads. Let's. If you guys want to come up here and, and pray, you can. And, and I say it all the time. Somebody will pray with you. I want you guys to be prayed for. I want us to come together. Even if you want to go around there, let's do that. I pointed out, you guys know what I'm saying here every time, but I just want you to remember that. I want it to never be forgotten. Let's pray together. Let's do this. Uh, scripture tells us to do these things together. When, when we come together as a church, uh, like you can pray at home. This is not the only place you can do that, okay? But let's do that when we're all here together with each other. If there's brokenness, if there's pain, if, there's, if you're dealing with sin, if, if, it's, if it's difficult, if it's crippling, if you don't have all the answers or whatever, d- don't walk out of here, okay? I, I don't know if you're getting anything from my voice that's telling you, like, keep all that stuff away. I don't want it. No, no, we're, we're supposed to come together in that way to help each other. Let's do that. I can't say that I know how to solve all those problems, but, but the one we're here worshiping does, okay? It's not, it's not me, it's not any type of person in the world, okay? We're coming here, we're worshiping God. He knows all those things, and we're coming here broken together as one, as a family, as a, as a fully functioning body, as, as it tells us, to pray for each other and to seek out the one who knows everything and the one who can heal everything and pray to him and love him and, and, and pray for him to change the things inside of us so that we can become like what we just talked about in there in this world. The, the, this world needs to see that from us, from the church, from Christians. And if you guys want to come up here and pray, let's do that. I'm going to pray real quick and uh, you can come up here. And if you want to give your life to Christ, you can do that right there where you are. You just, you just trust in him. You put your faith in Jesus. It's not by any works that you do. You realize that you're a sinner, that you need help, and you come to him. That's the only qualification you realize you need him. And every one of us do. That's the only qualification. It's not any works. And then you turn to him in faith. You believe in Jesus. He came into this world. He died on the cross for your sins that had to be paid for. That either he was going to do that for you or you had to do it with your life. He did it all. And you just come to him in faith and trust in him. And you will be saved. That's what he's saying there. Turn to him. Turn from your sins and run to him. That's what I'm saying and you'll be saved. You can do that. You can do that right there where you are. Let's pray. Father, I pray for everybody here. You know our lives. You you know what we're going through. You you know what we're facing. God, I I don't. I don't know the things. We don't all know what everybody here is facing, but, but we know you do, God, and I pray every single person here realizes that the God of all creation is there and you hear us and you know all these things and, and even know our, our terrible past or shady past or sins and all the things that we have, you still want us, God. And I pray everybody here would understand that. There, there's sometimes that we feel like we're the one that you don't want, God. But I don't see that anywhere in your word. You love us. Jesus, you came into this world for us because you loved us, because we had no hope, and you did it all. You came for us when we were your enemies, and you still reached out. And you offer salvation to us if we, if we will, if we'll just trust in you. And I pray everybody here understands that and will turn to you, God. And then help us here. Maybe we do know you, but we just don't know the next steps to take. God, help us. Help us here as the church, God, to do what we're called to do, to be there for each other and to push each other, God. And, and then you, you make it plain to us if we need to know things about each other, if we need to uh, start turning to each other and asking for forgiveness or, 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 or turn away from things and follow you, God. Whatever that it is, God, you help us to take those next steps to follow you, to grow more and more every single day. Help us to be the way that you've called us to be in your word, to love each other, to love other Christians, and and just show the world that we're your disciples, God, by us obeying your word and following you. I pray that happens. Jesus, change us. Make us different. Make us more like you, and I pray you'll help us to do that. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing this last song, and if you're willing and you're able, please rise and worship this with us.
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, Father, give him glory. Now I'm going to let y'all have a quick little seat. I'm going to pass this on over to Stephen. He's got some word for y'all. That was, I actually did it. It just, I clicked on only me could see it. So that's why, I don't know if anybody even here watches it. I probably shouldn't even say that. But yeah, I actually did one. 45 minutes, I stood in, in my office in there and preached to the screen. No, I was, I was teaching all kinds of really great stuff. And I had it only me could sure see it. it and I didn't know why. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> no, I was like, why is nobody getting on here? I was like, I was getting down. I was like, man, everybody's just, everybody's ditched me. You know, and I went on, and it was me. I somehow clicked on it. So that was, that was unintentional last week. So, but yeah, this week, I won't be there. Anyway, I thought you needed that concert. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, so we will have youth night this week, guys. So for those of you that can show up, you, I know some people said that they're going to be out because they got family, which, of course, we understand. We want you guys to have a great time. So youth night's every Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. Uh, women's group, second Saturday of the month. We just had one two weeks ago. The uh, next one will be in December. So you guys can get with uh, Beth, Dorothy, my wife, or Sandy uh, about that. Men's group is the third Saturday of every month. I, we just had one again this, just this past uh, weekend or yesterday. So we'll have another one next month on that. Text that number to give. Also, we don't talk about it much, guys, but anybody, if it's, on your, if it's, if it's ever on your heart to give, there's a box right there at the back, right, right by the, uh, on the side of the sound booth for anybody who wants to do that. Uh, questions, text Kyle, that's his real number. And that's, that's all we got. I just, I want to encourage you guys for uh, Thanksgiving week. I hope you guys have a great time. I hope you guys are just blessed that you, that you spend a lot of time uh, with your family and loved ones. And I just want to encourage you guys that don't miss that opportunity to talk about Jesus. Just, you know, you're going to be around family that you don't see that often. Uh, what a great opportunity that God presents us with when we see family, some we love more than others, right? Let's be honest. <laughs> but, but what a great opportunity that God gave us to, to preach the gospel to the people that we love the most that, that we're close to. So I just want to encourage you guys through this week and through really the rest of the holiday seasons we're visiting people, talk about Jesus. Don't miss those opportunities. Just do everything you can to just find a way to have that conversation with people because we love them. We want to make sure they're saved, right? So y'all have a great week. Appreciate you guys.